friends, it's Chrissy from First Day of Home. Today we're going to be talking about how to dry flowers five different ways. This is a great tutorial if you're looking to preserve your bridal bouquet or make DIY jewelry with resin. And we're going to talk about a lot of different ways that you can use dried flowers over the next few weeks. So this is the first in a series of tutorials that I'll be doing and I hope you'll follow along. Speaking of that, if you're new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. So hit that button below for more easy crafts and DIY projects. So let's go ahead and talk about what you'll need to get started. I picked a few different flowers from my garden and I do have a few tips for you. First, you'll wanna pick your flowers in the morning. Try to avoid picking flowers with brown or bruised petals, obviously. And then you'll wanna make sure your flowers are a little bit dry before you get started with these techniques. We're going to get started with the good old fashioned book press method. This is something your parents probably did or maybe you did this with a parent as a child. So you'll wanna start with just a regular book and I'm going to place a piece of parchment paper inside and just start placing my flowers a little bit spaced out. I like to separate the blooms instead of doing the whole stem, but if you have a bigger book, feel free to put the whole stem in there. I find that leaves don't work really well for flower pressing this way. It's really just your personal preference. But uh, as you can see, I brought a little bit of nature indoors when I did this. I had a little fly in one of these uh, blossoms in the crepe myrtle. But I'm just going to place a few more here and then get it all situated before I fold my paper in half and set it in there to dry for a few weeks. And we'll take a look in a minute at what that looks like. Feel free to rearrange some of the blossoms because you want to think about what they're going to look like when they are pressed flat. So I'm going to just make sure they're all situated where I want them before I close my book. And then I'll take some heavy object. You can use a brick or some other kind of heavy paperweight and set it on top. And we'll take a look in a minute at what it looks like. Two weeks later and we have beautifully pressed flowers. The color looks really good on these and they are paper thin. I really love the way these came out. You can use these for resin crafts like I mentioned or make your own bookmarks and I'll show you how to do some of those things in my next video. For the air dry method, I decided to use this bouquet I picked up from a nearby grocery store. And if you're going to use store-bought flowers, you do wanna trim the stems at an angle and keep your flowers in water until you're ready to dry them. Also, it's good to remove the leaves that are below the water line to prevent bacteria from forming. This bouquet is a cute mix of these little button palm mums and we've got some leaves here that don't tend to dry very well. So I wouldn't worry about drying those as much as some of these flowers like this rose I have and also a few little daisies and other types of mums. Um, I'm gonna show you how these compare with different drying methods. So I'm going to create a few different bundles of stems and then we'll wanna make sure we have a mix of flowers in each. And the first one will be for our air dry method. Here you'll wanna take some string or you can also use rubber band just to wrap the bundles of stems together and be able to hang them in a cool, dry and dark place. I've got my little jute twine here I'm going to tie around and then I like to put my flowers in the laundry room to dry. It's a lot more fun than actually doing laundry in there. So I'm going to hang these up in my laundry room. You can see I also have some mint drying here. And I'm gonna leave this bundle just to air dry. That's all you have to do. And when you're done drying, you can always use hairspray or another type of fixative to help preserve your flowers, but that's really it. It's so easy. Here it is a few days later, and I'll show you in a moment what it looks like a few weeks later. Now what I love about air drying flowers is it's got that vintage look. It's very romantic. It is a little more yellow toned. This is a great option for that French country or farmhouse look, especially for wreaths or swags. With our other bundle of store-bought flowers, I'm going to use the oven dry method. This is quite simply putting your flowers on a rack, like a baker's rack like I have here, cutting off the stems, 
and baking it in the oven until the flowers are completely dried out. Now, you'll see in a moment how this compares to the other drying methods. It does take a little bit of time, but compared to something like book pressing, it's a lot shorter. You're talking a matter of hours, not days. So this is a good option to speed up the drying process. But as you'll find out, it does result in a little more wilting or withering of the petals. So it's a different look. It's still a great option, and I'll show you what I like to use it for in just a minute. You'll notice for this option, I have removed all of the stems. I think it just comes out better. I'm going to bake it in my oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours. You can check it and monitor since some flowers, of course, will dry more quickly. I think oven drying is perfect for making potpourri. And you can see here, I added a few little plumbago stems. These are from a bush that I have outside and that blue really preserves nicely in the oven. Some of the reds, as you can tell, get a little deeper, but I think that's just a gorgeous look for potpourri. I decided to also use this silica gel to test on this bouquet, and it's like a sand that you'll pour into a container like this one that's plastic or metal. You don't wanna reuse the plastic container because some of the pesticides from flowers can leak into the silica gel. Just make sure you have a tight fitting lid for this particular method. Again, I'm going to trim my bouquet down, so I'm just leaving the flowers and I'm trimming right by the calyx that's at the bottom there, and I'm gonna use a variety of flowers here to show you how different flowers behave with silica gel. It's a great method for preserving color and texture, but you'll see some flowers are better than others for using this method and really all of the other drying methods too. So I'm going to start by pouring a layer of this silica gel into my plastic container. You will want to probably wear gloves just to protect your hands and maybe even a mask because the, the gel is like a sand that's very fine and it can kind of get into the air. You just don't want to be breathing that in. It's like when you pour flour or sugar into a container and some of that mist gets up in the air. You will notice that the instructions are inside the bag. A lot of people buy this and then they complain that there are no directions. So they're actually inside the bag. You'll want to keep those handy because they do have some good tips on how to dry different types of flowers. So I have my layer of silica gel about an inch and a half thick, and I'm going to place my flowers inside. Usually you'd want a little more room than what I'm showing here, but just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to put a few different flowers in here. And then I'm going to top the petals off with a little bit more silica gel. You don't need to completely cover it. You just wanna make sure that there's enough gel to wick the moisture out of the flowers. Once you have your flowers where you want them, all you have to do is put a lid on it and then set your flowers again in a cool, dry place. I did another batch here in one of those take-home containers from a restaurant, and again, it's always best to use similar flowers together. I did stick a few other varieties in here and plugged up any holes with some duct tape. I always feel like it's Christmas opening up these containers to see how your flowers look. And I'm gonna take a peek at these. You can see the color on the back looks really good. There was some darkening of some of the shades. I think this mum needs a little bit more time, but look at the crystals, the silica gel. You can tell that the blue crystals have turned pink and that's how you know that the silica gel is absorbing the moisture when those blue crystals turn that pink shade. I'm gonna put this mum back in for a little bit longer, but let's check on our little cushion palm mums. And I think these look pretty much done. I also stuck in a few of these little aster daisies. They are so dainty and look at how the color looks great even though they're shriveled. These button palms look really good. I love the color on these and the texture is really nice. It's not really brittle. You can use a little brush to brush off any of the extra silica gel, by the way. Our last method will just be using silica gel, but in the microwave. So you'll use a microwave safe dish without a lid, add a cup of water in the microwave, and then heat it at one minute intervals on medium power. Check it after each minute and see how your flower is doing. You can flip it over and turn it around so that it gets dried in the microwave evenly. And this is just a good option if you're short on time and aren't we all these days? So instead of waiting days for your flowers to dry with silica gel, you can get it in just minutes. 
Here's what our rose looks like after drying on medium power for about three and a half minutes. And I love the texture. It's not crunchy and brittle like a lot of other drying methods. You can still leave it in a closed container to completely dry a little bit more if you feel like it's not all the way there, but I just love the results. So here's our purple status after drying it in the microwave with silica gel. And let's go back and compare this to our oven dry method. So here's microwave, you can see great color. Here's the oven drying. It's not bad, but it's not as pretty as the microwave silica gel. Same thing here with those cushion palms. And here's a look at three of the drying methods compared to one another. So first we have oven drying. Then you can see that the silica gel method in the microwave is much better. And even better than that is just regular silica gel waiting a few days for your flowers to dry. So I'm dying to know which method was your favorite. I definitely am partial to the silica gel method. I think it does the best job of preserving the flower's color and texture, but I wanna know what you think. So leave me a comment below. Also, please share your creations with me over on Instagram. You can follow me at first day of home and tag me in your posts there. And if you like this video, I always appreciate a thumbs up. I hope you'll stick around for the rest of the series. We've got lots of fun in store and I'll see you next time.